Brittany Imlach is team captain of the varsity track and cross country teams here at UBC. Unfortunately, her intense lower leg pain has been severely cramping her style as a Thunderbird. About four years ago, I started to get intense leg pain in my calves while running, and occasionally my feet fall asleep and feel like they've gone numb. I usually get these symptoms on easy and tempo jogs, and as the intensity of the workout increases, the pain progresses to a cramp in the back of my calf. When I arrived on campus in first year, I started to notice that I got the same symptoms while I walked to class. It started to get so bad that I would have to stop and take breaks halfway to lecture, especially if there were any hills or stairs on my route. The pain goes away quickly after I stop walking or running. The doctors diagnosed me with functional popliteal artery entrapment syndrome. For my case, the surgery would involve partial removal of the hypertrophied muscle of my calf. I'd like to seriously consider any other options that I have before jumping into that surgery. Popliteal artery entrapment is usually misdiagnosed as compartment syndrome. Symptoms include clotic and calf pain in the anterior aspect of the calf that comes along with exercise. The severity of the symptoms are usually correlated with the intensity of the exercise, although pain can surprisingly be much worse while walking than running, likely because of the prolonged contraction of the gastrocnemius muscle while walking. Cessation of activity typically brings about relief and pain and other symptoms. Other symptoms include paresthesia, discoloration of the foot and toes, temperature changes in the lower leg, and tissue necrosis. It's important to examine the patient both at rest and post-exercise in order to make a proper diagnosis, as some of the symptoms may be absent at rest, especially in functional cases. The typical investigation includes post-exercise ankle brachial pressure and Doppler ultrasounds. The final investigation to confirm the diagnosis includes an angiography while the patient is actively plantar and dorsiflexing. Before we begin our presentation of the evidence for treatment option for Brittany's condition, discuss with your colleagues the answer to the following question. Given your knowledge of anatomical terminology, identify what you think are the principal differences that distinguish structural from functional popliteal artery entrapment. Structural and functional popliteal artery entrapment syndrome both result in the same intense calf pain. However, they have two different causes. In structural popliteal artery entrapment, there is a structural abnormality of the subject's anatomy that leads to artery occlusion. This includes unusual attachment of the gastrocnemius muscle to the knee or a crimped artery as it passes through the popliteal fossa. In functional popliteal artery entrapment syndrome, the hypertrophied calf muscle compresses the popliteal artery, resulting in artery occlusion. I've continued running for UBC while trying to determine the best option for my condition. It's been really tough, both mentally and physically, and most races I end up at the finish line on all fours, unable to stand, both calves completely cramped up. I'd really like to be able to get back to running and even just walking to class pain-free, but it's also really important to me that I carefully explore the, both surgery and the alternative options. Cutting my muscle up isn't something you can reverse if it doesn't work out perfectly, so I really want to make sure that there's nothing else that might help. In our efforts to help out our fellow T-Bird, we have called upon some experts in the field to help identify the quality decision for Brittany's treatment. Dr. Rajala is here to discuss the common surgery for popliteal artery entrapment, which she feels is the best option for Brittany's condition. Popliteal artery entrapment syndrome is rare. Over the last five years, I've only diagnosed five athletes with this condition out of 2,000 that have presented with lower leg pain. All five athletes received surgery. While Wafflis and colleagues completed a study in which five healthy male athletes, including a runner, underwent surgeries where the hypertrophic muscle was incised and a small longitudinal portion was removed. Decompression of the artery to allow blood flow is the primary goal of these procedures. In this study, no postoperative complications were observed for any of the patients. Patients returned to normal athletic activities within six to eight months, free of symptoms, Three of them even reported remarkable improvement in their athletic activities. Going beyond the fact that these surgeries are usually successful, 
This is a progressive disease, causing severe destruction in the arterial wall and pro proliferation of connective tissue. Ideally, we want to avoid this vessel damage. Early surgical intervention can prevent damage to the blood vessels and tissues, while progression can lead to complications such as intraluminal stenosis or post-stenotic dilatation. In order for Brittany to avoid further tissue damage, surgery is imperative and is effective at allowing an athlete like her to return to activity without complications. Although Dr. Rajala is very confident in prescribing surgery for Brittany's case, it is interesting to note that there is no level one evidence available in the literature. There are no systematic reviews, likely because popliteal artery entrapment is an uncommon and often misdiagnosed condition, and a randomized control trial study would be difficult to conduct. The strength of the study lies in the long-term follow-up of two years post-surgery, as well as a similarity between the athletes in this study and Brittany's condition. If surgery really is that successful for so many other athletes, maybe it is the way to go. This condition is really affecting me in competitions, but it's also affecting my daily functioning. It really sucks when you have to ask your friends to slow down because they're walking too fast. I'd still like to know if I have any other options. We were able to track down Beverly Larson, a pharmacist with extensive knowledge of vascular drug therapies. She has some interesting suggestions for Brittany. In the area of alternative treatments for the management of functional popliteal artery entrapment syndrome, alternatives to surgical intervention have been poorly researched. I would like to discuss an option that has been successful in treating the principal symptom of intermittent claudication, which was responsible for Brittany's chief complaint, pain. In a systematic review published in 2009, researchers looked at different randomized controlled trial drug therapies used to treat intermittent claudication associated with other peripheral artery diseases. I would like to emphasize that these drug treatments are not a cure. The review highlights the therapeutic benefits of two drugs based on the patient's maximal pain-free walking distance. The two drugs are simvastatin and pentoxifilin, which I will discuss separately. Simvastatin is a lipid-lowering agent that acts to reduce circulating low-density lipoproteins responsible for forming the plaques and eventual vascular occlusion that will develop at the sites of mechanical damage in the artery. In the groups administered simvastatin, there was a 121% increase in maximal walking distance after six months. Another group of similar studies using the phosphodiesterase inhibitor pentoxifilin also showed improvement in maximal pain-free walking distance for those with intermittent claudication. Averages of 59% improvement compared to placebo groups were observed. Pentoxifilin alters the shape of red blood cells, reduces blood viscosity, platelet reactivity, and plasma hypercoagulability to prevent and treat development of aggregating plaques at the site of vascular trauma experienced by the occluded blood vessels. Distal circulation is thus improved and so is subsequent function. Long-term benefits following cessation of drug therapy are not reported. For a patient like Brittany, I recommend these treatments to prevent progression of the narrowing of the artery. The idea here is to maintain vascular health. Again, these drugs treat symptoms of intermittent claudication and therefore not a cure for popliteal artery entrapment. This evidence satisfies the criteria for level one evidence as it is a systematic review of peer-reviewed, double-blinded, randomized, and placebo-controlled trials. In summary, although we have evidence to suggest that drug therapy has the potential to treat symptoms of intermittent claudation, it has not been tested specifically in individuals with popliteal artery entrapment. Surgery is currently the gold standard for treatment of this condition. Furthermore, early surgical intervention eliminates risk of further damage and enables complete resolution of symptoms and return to activity. Now that we have presented the evidence, take a moment to answer the following learning objectives. First, re-identify the differences between structural and functional popliteal artery entrapment. And second, based on the evidence provided, what is the best treatment option for an elite middle distance runner with functional popliteal artery entrapment syndrome?